Rick Hong here for Hollywood First Look Features. Tonight, we're at the premiere for Lost Transmissions. The movie stars Juno Temple, Alexander Daddario, and Simon Pegg. Let's take a first look. We should record some of your old songs. Oh, really? I think you've got something. I already do. Come in. Are you receiving me? Over. There's no music. You're the music. Your debut album. You'll get a vinyl release. I love your stuff. I thought, this girl, you know my damage. This is a huge opportunity. I've got a line of songwriters down the hall trying to write for Dana Lee. Aaron wants me to write for Dana Lee. How cool. I just don't see you as just being like a cog in a big machine. Darren, I love her. I love her. I want her. Can I have her? You know, when a singer finds a writer they think sounds like them, they hang on for life. Come on, I want my next hit. I was wondering, can you talk to me about wanting to do this? Because I believe this is your first written and directed feature. And like, I know you've done a lot of shorts. So why, why was it like you wanted to do this one, like mental illness kind of in the backdrop of this like music producer? Yeah, you know, it was really came out of a time of life that, you know, I wasn't expecting that, you know, I was young and having a lot of fun and didn't think that I would get a story that would sort of, you know, feed into my professional life for the last four or five years. But it's, um, you know, that's that's the way it is. You know, it sort of comes from the times that you're really rolling up the sleeves and living. Um, it was something that I went through with a group of friends. Um, it, it was loosely inspired by. And um, and something I grew up, I grew up with schizophrenia in my family. So, in this time around, it, you know, I really learned a lot about the mental health care system and how to sort of successfully land somebody who has had a, a, an episode. So. I felt it was worth devoting, you know, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to um, to share with the world because I, I felt like we we learned something valuable from it. It's like your first foray at writing and directing a feature, not a short. Now you have Simon Pegg, you got Juno Temple. Were you like, oh, okay, I'm I'm in good hands. I got a good cast to start with. Yeah, I mean, I just felt really lucky. I mean, they, um, yeah, out of the gate to get you know such fine actors. It. You know, it, they were, um, you know, immediately upon meeting them, they were, I knew that I would really hit the jackpot because they're also just very lovely people. And we all got along, you know, famously. And it was just, it was a real delight to sort of entrust each other with, you know, uh, this was a new experience for all of us in, very, in different ways. And um, it was, it definitely made a very tight shoot feasible to be able to walk in there we have you know a handheld camera we have so you know just so many hours with 19 locations across LA in a very limited amount of days and they could just go in and nail in it and that was that that was essential to you know the success of the film I actually did what I appreciated about your movie is that yeah you kind of tap into the, the legal aspects of like how somebody be, can, can be held versus why they can't what they're coded as like the 5150 the 5250 I also appreciate it. You ask that because so often people are like, "Oh, that's such like, that's very t tiny minutia. You know, no one's gonna, you know, no one needs to go through the weeds like that." But it's, it's actually if you've gone through the experience, everybody knows what a 5150 is, and it's, you know, it's very much a part of the experience. So most people tell you it's like a Van Halen album cover, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, but I'm dead serious. Like I, I appreciated it because. I was trying to think about, you know, like I've seen a lot of movies where people are trying to tackle mental illness, but like you got the real kind of the legal aspect of it. Also, what I also appreciated is that you, and I was wondering, is this, was it a challenge for you like, going down a skid row? I don't know if shooting down there was like a challenge, if you're, it was like a safety thing or like what kind of permits you needed to do. When I first told my producers that I want to do that, they were like, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> they were very nervous um, and understandably so. but. I had done a lot of work and I had done a lot of outreach into the community for the year prior to shooting. Um, you know, I'd gone to a lot of organizations that had actually um, one called the LA Poverty Department that put on theater productions with homeless and um, formerly homeless actors. And so we had, um, we had met a lot of individuals uh, of the Skid Row community who were involved in helping us uh, bring this to the screen. And when it came time to actually go down there and shoot, we felt extremely safe because they really welcomed us. And they even protected us because there's some people that are, you know, they understand if you know, if you're sort of known in the community, they accept you and they know what's going on because they're very aware of the people that come in and out because they're there all day and seeing exactly what's happening. Um, and 
it's, uh, you know, they were, they kind of acted as a buffer um, and, you know, kind of warding off anybody who was not familiar with who we were or why we were there. And they even um, helped us build some of our sets. They helped us bring some of their own tent, um, tents and bikes and, you know, they were like, you need cardboard condo there and they'd bring some of their cardboard boxes and help us build some of the sets on the on the scene where Juno's walking through the streets. So, you know, it was move. It was incredibly moving for all of us. Those days were very very special, and um, it. And they said, you know, they came up to us, some of them, in tears after, and said that there are a lot of films that shot down there, and nobody had ever included them like that. So, it, you know, I was I was very happy that you know we were able to have that experience with them. It was in a constant state of learning. Do you know what I mean? I feel like she's learning about this human that comes into her life who she cares about and she's learning about his mind, which then is opening a doorway to learning about her own mind. Um, I think, yeah, she's kind of in a state of an eye-opening experience all the time. How is it working with Simon? Because normally we know him as a comedy guy in this straight drama. He's so brilliant in this. I loved every second of working with him. I would work with him as often as possible. And uh, I don't know, I think he brought such a gravitas to the part because he comes with humor and and I think especially dealing with the subject matter of mental illness actually come approaching it with some humor is in my experience with people that have battled with mental illness a lot of them do have a, a, a sense of humor about it and um, and I think it made made the character actually very relatable to people and and shows that you know mental illness isn't just terrifying it's something that that needs to be talked about and something that actually affects the people going through it more than anybody else I know you sing in real life as well when you're in the scenes were you holding back a little bit is this were you like thinking okay I'm gonna do my singing in the car voice or I'm gonna do like this is my like singing in the shower voice it's about her, yeah because Hannah is so nervous so it's about definitely she's holding back and she's almost it's like a blossoming flower you know she's kind of finding her voice and um, finding a way to be okay with her own voice and hopefully by the end it's a little louder than it was initially. Thanks so much for watching the movies in theaters Friday March 13th until next time I'm Rick Hong and you've been watching Hollywood First Look Features. Look here listen really carefully if you can hear that transmission I scare people don't see you move. That sounds so good. That's nice. I like that. We've constructed like a whole made up world and it stops us from seeing everything how it really is. Stop thinking. What are you feeling? If you can put that into your work, then you're going to come up with something really great.